Nataka kuongea juu ya the altar of the heart ama madhabahu ya moyo. Wakati mwingi tunapoongea juu ya madhabahu tunaangalia jengo kama hili na tunaona mahali hapa mbele tunasema haya ndiyo madhabahu. Lakini ningetaka kusema kile kinacholeta tofauti hata kwa nyumba yeyote ama kwa ukuhani hata katika ufalme wa giza kile kinacholeta utofauti ni madhabahu yaliyojengwa ndani ya huyo kuhani and that is why we are priests unto god and because you are a priest that means a priest carries an altar because a priest is a temple by himself all by herself na kwa hivyo haya ni mambo ambayo ningependa tujifundishe siku ya leo ndio tuweze kuona ni jinsi gani Mungu anataka tukaweze kumtumikia na ni jinsi gani tunaweza kuwa more effective katika kumtumikia Mungu na ningependa kusema hivi ya kwamba mpango wa Mungu kutoka mwanzo ulikuwa ni ushirika the will of god from the beginning was fellowship kuna wakati uh, mafarisayo wakakuja wakamuliza Yesu wewe Yesu unasemaje juu ya taraka kwa sababu Musa alitukubalia ya kwamba unaweza wacha mke wako na ukampatia a certificate of divorce M- M- Yesu akasema Musa aliwakubalia mpatiane cheti cha taraka kwa sababu ya ugumu wa mioyo yenu lakini haikuwa hivyo kutoka mwanzo yani kumaanisha the will of god from the beginning was not divorce lakini kuna mambo ambayo yalileta ugumu wa mioyo na kwa hivyo taraka ikapata nafasi nasi lazima tujue kwamba the will of god from the beginning haikuwa dini haikuwa tu watu wakuja wakusanyike hapa watosheke waseme walikuwa kanisani mapenzi ya bwana kuanzia pale shamba la edeni mungu alitamani kuwa na ushirika na mwanadamu bwana asifiwe sana paka siku ile adam na eve walitenda dhambi na wakati mungu alishuka at the cool of the day ha huh? Bwana asifiwe sana. Adam akajificha. Mungu akauliza Adam, "Bwana umejificha?" Adam akasema, "Nimekusikia nikatoroka kwa sababu niko uchi." Na kuanzia pale, Adam and Eve were banished from the Garden of Eden, wakatolewa nje. Because the Garden of Eden is not just a place, it's not just a location, it is an environment where there was an open heaven and God would come down at the cool of the day and he would fellowship with Adam and Eve but when they sinned wakatolewa pare na walipotolewa pare that means even their fellowship with God was cut off and that is why from there wakaanza kutoa dhabihu za wanyama na hazingeweza kuleta odoleo kamilifu uh, 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 la dhambi zetu paka wakati Yesu alipokufa bibi nasema ya kwamba wakati Yesu alikuwa msalabani akalia Eloi Eloi laba masakitani Mungu wangu Mungu wangu kwa nini umeniwacha and the bible says uh, Jesus gave up his spirit and the bible says uh, at that moment the curtain of the temple was torn into two yani ni kumaanisha kwamba baada ya Yesu kukulipia gharama ya kukataliwa kwa sababu ghadhabu yote ya Mungu aliweka juu ya Yesu Kristo wakati alipokuwa pale msalabani wakati ghadhabu yake alisikia imetoshereka ha basi akasema kitambaa cha hekaru mahali ambapo kuhani mkuu angeingia mara moja kwa mwaka Mungu akasema basi kwa sababu ya huyu Adamu wa pili nimekubalia mwanadamu arudi katika uwepo wangu Praise the name of the living God Hallelujah Amen 
that curtain ambayo ilikuwa inatuzuilia jina bwana ipewe sifa yesu alitumia dhabihu ya mwili wake ili hiyo curtain ikaondoka na kuondoka kwa ile curtain kumaanisha ya kwamba you can have now fellowship with god bwana asifiwe sana but we have replaced our fellowship with god with religion yeah badala ya kuwa na ushirika na mungu wanadamu wamefikiria yesu alituletea dini alituletea religious rituals wengine wamefikiria kazi ya msalaba imemfanya mungu awe a blessing machine ya kwamba sasa mtu anaweza kuja akapokea kile anachotaka but god is not a blessing machine god desires to have a relationship with man Praise the name of the living God. May God heal your relationship with him in the mighty name of Jesus. And the only way we can be able to communicate with God and to have fellowship with God is because we have an altar. Bwana swe sana. We say that an altar is a place where there is connection between the physical and the spirit realm madhabahu ni mahali pako na kuunganishwa kwa ulimwengu wa kimwili na ulimwengu wa kiroho kwa hivyo ni kumaanisha kwamba madhabahu yako na connection to the spirit realm bwana asifiwe sana naye bibi inasema kwamba kabla yesu hajakufa hajakuja tulikuwa tumekufa katika dhambi zetu lakini alipokuja tuliweza kufufuliwa kile kimefufuliwa ndani yetu ni madhabahu ambayo yalikuwa ndani yetu ni uwezo wetu wa kuweza kuasiliana na Mungu Bwana asifiwe sana ukisoma biblia katika kitabu cha Exodus tuanzie pale 29 ama tuendelee from Exodus 29 to 37 Seven days you shall make atonement for the altar and sanctify it and the altar shall become most holy whatever touches the altar must be holy this is how moses was given instruction to prepare the altar through the house of aaron who was supposed uh, to offer sacrifices before god and uh, the bible says in the, the old testament was a foreshadow of the things that were supposed to come the reality is in Christ Jesus kwa hivyo ni kumaanisha kile walichofanya katika agano la kale kilikuwa mfano even the tabernacle itself it's a foreshadow the reality is in Christ Jesus na kwa hivyo tukitaka kuangalia the reality ama from the scripture tuangalie the role and the purpose kazi na kusudi ya madhabahu kutoka maandiko ni gani tunaona ya kwamba ilikuwa ni mahali pa kutolea dhabihu it was a place of offering sacrifice number two, it was a place where they could gather and commemorate important meetings yeah and also it was a place of burning incense ni mahali palikuwa pa kuchoma uvumba na ukilinganisha what was happening in the old testament and what is supposed to happen in the new testament or in the new covenant in the new testament the bible says uh, we are the temple we are the temple of the holy spirit first corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16 do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you do you not know that you are the temple of God that is very important to understand that you are the temple of God mimi ni hekaro bwana asifiwe sana i'm not, not just a walking physical human being but i am the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in me. 
That means a spirit cannot dwell in a physical altar until it is dwelling in a priest who carries the altar in himself. When I got born again, I gave my life to Christ. My first church was in Crisco Church. Um, and I remember, because we could go there very early for, especially when immediately when I joined, I was doing a commitment class. Na Nairobi Cinema ilikuwa ni cinema hall. So kuna watu wamelala kule, wamevuta sigara, wengine wamerewa, wengine wametapika. So asubuhi munaenda mna osha, kuna rufu ya pombe, mnaweka marash kidogo. And you start worshiping God. And the presence of God would come down. And God would minister to us. Let me tell you. Iyo kama ingekuwa ni the Old Testament, nothing like that would happen. Yani mahali ya tinyumba ya mungu. The tabana kwa mahali imejengwa mutu wa mevuta sigara. Mutu wa mekuja wa mekunyu wa pare pombe. Na unataka mungu wa tembe pare. Haingeweze kana. Bwana sifuwe sana. Lakini in the New Testament, the Bible says, don't you know now that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God dwells in me because I am the temple and in the temple there is an altar. Kwa hivyo, tunaweza kutembea na deception wakati tu tunaangalia kanisa na hapa ndiyo tunakuja tunanyenyekea sana. Najua sasa tuko kwa nyumba ya Bwana. Tumeenda kuoba kwa madhabahu ya Bwana. Tunaweza kuwa na a lot of deception na unakuta ya kwamba hata kupokea baraka zetu inakuwa ni vigumu because hatuna ile picha halisi ya vile Mungu anavyofanya kazi Bwana asifiwe sana Unaweza danganyika kwa sababu uwepo wa Mungu unatembea hapa unafikiria utabarikiwa Lakini wewe mwenyewe haujabeba madhabahu ambayo roho wa Mungu anakaa ndani yako Bwana asifiwe sana Haleluya Sasa tukitembea na wewe mkutane na rafiki yako tusalimiane na yeye anaweza kusema ya sasa tunajuana na aposto Bwana asifiwe sana wewe ndiyo umefanya ni msalimie na hata kama mnaongea mimi nitasimama hapo kando lakini naweza kusema hey nilimuona hata tulisalimiana na yeye so kuna watu wanaweza ku experience presence ya Mungu kwa sababu ya huyo jirani mko na yeye Mungu wako amekuja kwa sababu yako Sio wewe unabeba Mungu. Lakini kwa sababu jirani yako anabeba Mungu, unamusikia. Na unaweza tembea katika hiyo deception ya kwamba nitabarikiwa. Lakini wewe mwenyewe hauna u... because God's desire is not to be a blessing machine. It is a desire for relationship. Bana asifiwe sana. So it's not a wonder kuwa kanisa ambalo liko na nguvu za Mungu na uwepo wa Mungu na bado ukue katika shida zako na babu hali yako haibadiliki kwa sababu wewe mwenyewe haujajua siri ya kujengea Bwana madhabahu mahali ambapo akija anaweza kutua ama mahali madhabahu yanayokuunganisha wewe mwenyewe binafsi na Mungu wako Praise the name of the living God. 1 Corinthians 6.15 Do you not know that bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and then make them members of a harot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Verse 18, the Bible says, uh, free sexual immorality 
every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you have from God. And you are not your own. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. For you are bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. And in your spirit which are God's. Praise the name of the living God. Because if we understand this teaching of building the altars of our hearts. We can move to the next level. Buana pewe sifa. Hallelujah. If we understand, number one, that you are the temple. So the members of your body, iwe ni macho, iwe ni masikio, iwe ni mikono yako. Huh? The members of your body, they are the members now. Ama your body is the body of ni mwiri wa kristo, kwa sababu diyo mahali ya mbapo ye mwenyewe, anatumia kuishi. When he came on earth, he said, a body you prepared for me. Why? Because the earth has been given to men, but the highest heavens belongs to God. And because the earth has been given to men for God to come here legally, he must find a body. Ata shetani. Diyaweze kuja hapa duniani. Spirits are illegal here on earth. Hazijapatiwa na fasi ya kutawara. Yuri amepatiwa na fasi ya kutawara ni mwanadamu ambaye he is a spirit being but he has a physical body. Kwa hivyo mwingine kama atajaribu kuja ku exercise authority lazima atafute mwili. Na niposa unaona shetani is in the business ya kutafuta watu watakao kubalia atumie miri yao. Lakini also God is in the business ya kutafuta watu watakao kubali atumie miri yao. That is why the Bible says in the book of uh, Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, offer your body as a living sacrifice. Bwana sifuwe sana. I beseech you therefore brethren by the masses of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable to God which is your reasonable service. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Unajua watu wale pora na zungumuzia hapo ni watu ambao walikuwa mezoea kwenda na kutoa dhabihu wanashika mnyama wanaenda wanamchinja katika madhabahu wanamtoa awe dhabihu sasa pora anapoambia sasa miri yenu ndio mtatoa iwe dhabihu praise the name of the living god ilikuwa na impact kwao sana kwa sababu walikuwa wanajua yule mnyama anayetolewa dhabihu lazima aende na ateketezwe praise the name of the living god sasa pora anawaambia kwamba majira yamebadilika sasa Mungu hataki wanyama anataka nyinyi wenyewe mutoe miri yenu iwe dhabihu Bwana asifiwe sana na riposa Paul katika hicho kitabu cha 1 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 15 anasema je unajua anayeshikana na kahaba anakuwa moja na huyo kahaba katika mwili wake kwa sababu dhambi zote zingine mwanadamu anatenda ziko nje ya mwili lakini dhambi ya usherati ya usinzi anatumia mwili wake. Let me tell you brethren. Kama kuna demon ambayo lazima uishinde wakati huu ni demon ya the last of the fresh. Ni demon ya immorality. Na imeachiriwa dio idefile watu wengi. Kwa sababu shetani anajua haya majira. The Bible says ya kwamba katika nyumba yote kubwa kuna vyombo vya udongo kuna vya mbao kuna vya dhahabu kuna vya fedha lakini yule ajitakasae atakuwa chombo ambacho kitatumika kufanya kazi ya heshima kwa hivyo shetani anajua kwamba kuna kazi Mungu anataka kufanya na ni kazi ya heshima 
ni kazi ya kumletea Mungu utukufu na theone we Mungu ataweza kufanya kazi ya heshima ni kupata watu ambao watajitakaza wampatie Mungu miili yao kama dhabihu iliyo hai na kwa sababu shetani anajua it is inevitable to stop the coming revival anatafuta a defile as many as possible kanisa lazima lishinde mapepo yote ya usinzi ambayo yamemwagwa kwa wingi praise the name of the living god ndio yachafue the temple mahali ambapo Mungu anataka kukaa Yesu akasema wale watakao nipenda nitaongea na baba na tutakuja and we are going to make our abode in that person Imagine Yesu akisema yule atakaye nipenda nitaongea na baba anasema kwa ufupi ya kwamba we are not in the holy of holies now we are looking for a temple we are looking for a body that can be offered praise the name of the living god as a living sacrifice Hey, hatukai katika hiyo mijengo iliyojengwa na mikono ya wanadamu. Tunatafuta watu atakao toa miili yao iwe dhabihu iliyo hai. Na tutakapopata moja kama huyo, tutakuja nitaongea na baba. Sasa hayuko katika sanduku la agano. Sasa hayuko in the holy of holies usimtafute pale mtafute kwa watu waliotoa miili yao iwe dhabihu iliyo hai hey hapo ndio anatafuta makao praise the name of the living god we overcome the demons of immorality and fornication in this altar in the mighty name of jesus Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Loho ya usherati. Praise the name of the living God. Ama niseme sexual purity isipopatikana kanisani wakati huu we are going to be on danger of missing out on the great revival that God wants to release. Bwana asifiwe sana. Na kwa hivyo ukiwa ndugu na uko hapa, sexual purity is a key to maintain your body to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hata unapojaribiwa namna gani, when you go and conjoin with another woman who is not your who is not your wife or a man who is not a, your husband, then you are using the temple. Unatumia mwili wako ambaye ndiye hekaru kufanya ile dhambi utatarajiaje baadaye umwalike Mungu aweze kuja ama madhabahu yako yatafanya kazi namna gani jina bwana ipewe sifa na kwa hivyo unaona one of the biggest battles we are fighting now is a battle of sexual purity sasa hizi unakuta kwamba hata watoto wa shule za msingi ha wameingia katika mambo ya usharati Bwana asifiwe sana. Ile fia watu walikuwa nayo. Hata wanawake waliolewa. Praise the name of the living God. Hawana uoga tena wa kujiingiza katika dhambi za usinzi. Wanaume walioa. Hawana aibu. Neno la mpango wa kando, shetani anataka tulizoee likae kama ni kawaida mpaka tunaweza kutamuka ya kwamba kuwa wanawake wengi hakuna shida where are we heading to i want to declare this revival is unstoppable because god is raising a, a remnant in the mighty name of jesus watu watakao sema ya kwamba i refuse to be defiled in the mighty name of jesus Bwana asifiwe sana. Haleluya. And sexual purity is not just about getting to into a bed with a man or a woman. It's the way you carry yourself, the things you watch, 
the things you are always meditating. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. There is a lot of defilement. Unakuta hata mwanaume anakupigia picha na kuambia nitumie tu picha yako ukiwa uchi. Na hizo picha zimejaa kila mahali. Kwa sababu sexual purity ndio shetani anapigana nayo. Kwa sababu anajua mili ya watu ikinajisika. Hiyo ndiyo the temple ambayo Mungu ako na haja nayo katika majira haya. Bana siwe sana. Si Mungu atusaidie katika jina la Yesu Kristo tukaweze kulinda mili yetu. Tuliambiwa pale kitambo ya kwamba Mungu hana haja na mwili. Ako na haja na roho. But I don't know which Bible I am reading. If it is the same Bible you read. And my Bible is telling me that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Sasa ukiniambia Mungu hana haja na mwili. Ako na haja na roho. Na e, Biblia inaniambia huo mwili ndio hekaru yake. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. You are dead long. Mungu ako na haja na mwili wako. And the Bible says whoever destroys the temple will be destroyed. The Bible says the members of your body are not your own. They are the members of Christ. Bwana asifiwe sana. Hallelujah. Those beautiful thighs that you have, they are not yours. They belong to Christ. Praise the name of the living God. So the way you carry yourself is important. When you know this body that I am carrying around, every member of my body is a member of Christ, then you be careful how you carry yourself. Mungu akona haja na mwili wako. Na kama akona haja na mwili, akona haja na vile unavarishwa. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Kama akona haja na mwili wako, aishi ndani ako na haja na vile huo mwili unavyotumikishwa unafanyishwa kazi gani you cannot use your body for pornography for masturbation and then you give god the same body na umwambie tumia huu mwili hata uwezi patiana mwili wako kwa urafi alafu unataka mungu atumia huo mwili hata weza kuutumia praise the name of the living god Hallelujah. The way we carry ourselves, our bodies, can be a great hindrance. And the devil is using that as a door to defile our lives. Praise the name of the living God. That is why siku ya leo kiangalia vipindi ambavyo vilikuwa vinaonyeshwa usiku. Siku ya leo katika runinga zinaonyeshwa mchana. Paka unashindwa wenye hizi TV ni wazee ama ni watoto. Ye yeah, anaweza kutazama hizo picha na watoto wake. Kwa nini anawekea watu wengine? Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Lakini kwa sababu ni ngome inashika watu wote na ngome huwa inafanya watu waone mambo haya ni kawaida. Ilhali sio kawaida. That is why Biblia inasema tuangushe kila mawazo yanayojiinua na tuyateke nyara yakaweze kutii neno la Kristo. Praise the name of the living God. Kwa sababu kuna mawazo yanaweza kujinua yakasema hii ni sawa, hii ni kawaida. Hata kanisani mambo mengine yanakaa sawa, yanakaa kawaida lakini sio kawaida. Praise the name of the living God. Hey! We are on the verge of a great revival. We are on the verge of a great outpouring of the spirit of God. Ah, God is saying, consecrate your body for me. Offer your body as a living sacrifice. Hey, raise an altar for me in your heart. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, from verse 19. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Verse 20. Having 
been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Verse 21, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. Verse 22, the last one, in whom you are also being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. We are being built done what? We are being built together for a dwelling place or for a spiritual house where God can live in the spirit. Yani kumanisha wapendwa kuja kwetu kanisani sio kanisa huwa inafanya tunapokea miujiza ni sisi wenyewe kukubali kujengwa tunafanyika nyumba ya kiroho then Mungu anakuja anaanza kuishi pale. And so the question is, nimejengeka kiasi gani kufanyika a spiritual house? And let me tell you, God is raising spiritual power houses. Ya kwamba kuna watu watajengeka kuwa nyumba za kiroho ambazo Mungu anaishi ndani na roho wake. Na kwa sababu kwa hivyo ninapotembea I'm not just a physical human being walking I am a spiritual power house Hii ndio ilifanya Yesu mwanamke angemguza anapona Kwa sababu he is a spiritual power house Hiyo ndio ilikuwa inafanya Petero anatembea sio kivuri kilikuwa kinaponya watu ni kwa sababu he is a spiritual power house there is a way you can consecrate your life. There is a way you can offer your body as a living sacrifice. Mpaka Mungu anakufanya his dwelling ya kwamba even without a word you can affect your surrounding. Praise the name of the living God. Hata bila neno. Hallelujah. Kwa sababu wewe sasa I am not just contained. Katika haka kamwili kadogo unaona. Apana, mimi ni nyumba kubwa ya kiroho. Hey! You don't know my size. Praise the name of the living God. Tell your neighbor you don't know my size. Kwa sababu wengine wana kuangalia na iyo urefu yako, na iyo webaba yako, wanaona your size. You don't know my size. I am a spiritual house. Hey, may God open your inner eyes. Mungu afungue macho yako ya kiroho. Uone watu wengine ni manyumba makubwa ya kiroho yaliyojengwa. Nataka kuendelea kujengwa. Nifanyike nyumba ya kiroho ambayo Mungu anaishi kwa roho wake because the altar is a dwelling place of the Lord in my heart there is an altar and I am a building the Lord Lord is building me to become a spiritual house First Peter chapter 2 verse 5 you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. The Bible says that you also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual, a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to do what? To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the living God. So the Bible is very clear that God wants you to be a spiritual house. Mungu anataka uwe nyumba ya kiroho. Na sasa ukiwa nyumba ya kiroho uanze kutoa dhabihu ambazo zitakubalika bele za Mungu kupitia Yesu Kristo. God desires every believer's heart to be an active altar dedicated to the glory of God. That is God's desire. That each one of us, our hearts, uh, the heart of every believer will be an active altar. You know there are altars 
that are not active. One of the things that causes an author to be active is a secret of removing the ashes of yesterday and the ability to be able to bring new firewood. If you want to keep the fire burning, ata kwa jiko ya kawaida ukitaka moto uendelee kuwaka, lazima ujue kuondoa majivu ya jana na kuweka kunimpia. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, without firewood, a fire goes out. So every active altar razima iwe na mtu ambaye anai service kuondoa majivu ya jana. Bwana asifiwe sana. Hallelujah. Majivu ya jana. Arafu unaweka kuni mpya. Moto unaendelea kuwaka. So ningetaka wapendwa tujue ya kwamba Mungu anatamani kila muaminio moyo wake uwe ni madhabahu yanayofanya kazi an active altar hallelujah and number two, you need to be or oh, such altars can become the most powerful instrument of influence madhabahu kama hayo yanaweza kutumika kuleta mabadiliko makubwa First Kings chapter 18. If you read the history, you see that in Camel, there was an altar of the Lord. But this altar, with the time, it was destroyed. One of the reasons could be because people had turned away from worshipping the true God. They had destroyed the altars of Jehovah in the land. And so the Bible says that when the evening sacrifice came, and I just told everybody, now come to me. Wachana na hao wajinga ambao wanajikatakata na Mungu wao hawezi kujibu. Jo mukaweze kuona. Sasa hii madhabahu ya kamo hata kama ilikuwa pale it was not an active altar. It was in ruins. That means there can be an altar but that altar is destroyed. If you don't guard your altar, the enemy is after that altar to destroy that altar. Kwa sababu shetani anajua the influence and the power of altars. Na anajua ulimwengu unatawaliwa na madhabahu. Na hasa ile madhabahu inayotawala ulimwengu sio mijengo hii imejengwa ni watu ambao ni nyumba za kiroho ambao wanafanyika gome za kiroho praise the name of the living god hallelujah the bible says elijah repaired the altar of the lord that was in ruins let me tell you my brother my sister the devil is after you he want to destroy your altar and so many altars have been destroyed praise the name of the living god hallelujah what is going to bring divine visitation in the sanctuary where we are going, it's not the beauty of the building. It is a people whose altars have been repaired. Imagine what we have done. We have been in the house of God. And the water of the minio, their altars are active. You know there are people here, their spiritual altars, they are not active. They can see, but the altar is not active. It is not connecting. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. There is no fire. But imagine 5,000 people gathered in one place, worshiping, praising, praying. And their altars are active. Madhabahu yao yanachoma. Yanafanya kazi. Praise the name of the living God. Sitara za nakuru zitararuliwa. The covering of darkness over our city will be destroyed. The covering of darkness over our nation will be destroyed. Why? Because of the fire that is coming out of those altars. Hey! I release the grace to repair your altar. I activate your altar. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
siuondoe majivu katika madhabahu yako siuweke kuni e katika madhabahu yako katika jina ya Yesu Kristo hatuendi kwa dini hapana wa wow! we are going to worship the lord in truth and in spirit bwana sifue sana haleluya you don't know the kind of influence ambayo tunaweza kuwa nayo tukiwa waaminio ambao madhabahu yetu yanafanya kazi and that is why the devil hata Mungu aliwaambia when you get to the land destroy the altars why because they are using the altars to control the land and to dominate so when you get there destroy the us and raise you us that is what God told Gideon destroy the altar of Baal and build me another altar this is a season to destroy every other altar and raise altars for our God in the name of Jesus Bwana asifiwe sana. Hata kukija makuhani wa ufalme wa giza, wanaojiita waabuduo shetani. Hiyo kama dhabahu yao, wakutane na waaminio elfu tano ambao madhabahu yao yanawaka moto, watakimbia mbio ama wapatiane maisha yao kwa Yesu Kristo. Lakini wakiwa mahali, and that is the why the devil want to bring confusion in the church. Watu waingie kwa hasira. Watu wajichafue. Watu wanajisike ndio adui akiingia pale. Hakuna madhabahu mengine yanafanya kazi. Ni yake yanayofanya kazi. Lakini sio hapa. Hapa tunakataa. He! Kela babo shanda baganda ribabo yanda God is releasing an anointing now to repair your altar Elijah repaired the altar in the mighty name of Jesus renew your covenant with God hey repair your altar the anointing to repair the altars has come down has come down the presence of God is coming down in the mighty name of Jesus yes the grace to repair the altars madhabahu yaliyokuwa yameharibiwa eh shakaba ganda bakata maganda makata maganda makata maganda makata maganda ramakata makata ya baganda makata maganda hera bakata maganda kuna madhabahu yataanza kuchoma yataanza kuteketeza yataanza kutoa dhabihu za kiroho zitakazo kubarika katika jina Yesu Kristo kwa sababu babu yale madhabahu yamekuwa activated i activate iwa orta kajado county kitengela Missions to the Body of Christ International MBCI in conjunction with Kitengela Pastors Fellowship invites you to possessing the Promise of Revival Conference from 13th till 19th of March 2023 daily from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at Kitengela Stadium inside the Mega Tent. Join thousands in anointed sessions of prayers Praise, worship and impartation through the word of God ministered by Apostle John Kemani William. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day. In our time make them known. In a wrath remember us. Habakkuk chapter 3 verses 2. Remember, we shall be having a mega kesha on Friday from 9:30 p.m. Praise and worship sessions will be led by Kingdom Seekers Fellowship. Possessing the Promise of Revival Conference is an interdenominational meeting free and open